All right. Um, our first speaker after lunch is Michael Phillips and Rocco Galgano. They are the uh, men behind Nickel Steamroller. Let's give them a warm welcome. So this uh, presentation is going to talk a little bit about our evolution from being a uh, tool for the retail platform that started in 2011 and what it's evolved to today. A little bit about us, NSR is just a two-person team. Uh, it's me and Rocco. Uh, we discussed merging in June of 2013, and then we officially merged uh, January of this year and, and launched. And by the way, we're going to go through this presentation really quickly and then get to a demo, which will be much more interesting. A couple of highlights um, of the 2.0. Uh, if in case you don't know, it's located at nickelsteamler.com. It is one of the most complete analytics sites out there for Prosper and Lending Club. We support both platforms completely. There are no sign-up or paywalls needed to actually get into the um, public data and aggregate and do back testing and kind of get a feel for how the asset class has performed over the years. Uh, we've put a lot of effort into building a platform agnostic design. What that means is as new players come on, we've obviously seen today, um, we can easily support them. So we're not going to box ourselves in there by necessarily designing schemas, hard coding them to data. It's a very flexible design. Uh, one feature that a lot of people enjoy is the individual portfolio analysis. Um, Lending Club recently added their NAR, so they kind of do what Nickel Steamler does. Our, our loss estimates aren't as conservative, but um, effectively what you can do is you can kind of see how late loans are impacting your ROI instead of actually waiting for them to default. Uh, we also support the issue, the active, and the secondary market, and we allow you to do filtering and searching on, on all three aspects of those, of those loans. NSR is a platform. We feel that we've really evolved from a tool to more of a platform that you can build a business on. Um, that, of course, will include high-speed order execution, white labeling with custom content management, uh, client access portal, which we'll get into a little bit later, reporting and portfolio monitoring. A couple use cases would be for registered investment advisors. Say you've got 20 clients, you want to get some exposure to peer-to-peer -peer lending. NSR is an ideal tool for this. Fund management with the high-speed high execution. I mean, we give a lot of feedback. We give you a lot of analytics. You can kind of tune your investment process on the fly. You can see maybe this assumption you made uh, three months ago and your model isn't quite working out and how to correct that. Um, and then finally, with that white labeling, um, you can basically brand the entire NSR experience for your company and do client demos on it. So they don't actually have to know that you're using NSR as a back end. A couple of the more advanced, we do support the filter-based investing. We support every single data element that Prosper and Lending Club offer. For Prosper, it's about 530 data elements, and for Lending Club, it's around 100. Um, we have something called a formula editor, that, which allows you to kind of design as what you see is what you get formulas. So uh, instead of, you know, I'd really like to know what the gross annual income or their monthly income divided by their installment would be, you can actually build those values on the fly and they actually do the back testing to see if there's any meaningful data within that result set. Um, a new feature we recently added was model hosting, and we've actually developed a Java SDK. So applications like SaaS actually allow you to export models into Java, which can then easily be ported into Nickel Steamroller. Um, you've got the ability then to set up model permissions if you wanted to, say, expose another client to that model. So it's a pretty flexible design. And then finally, cash management for registered investment advisors. You may have to do distributions. Uh, we've got tools built in that can assist with that. Mike's handed off to me to, to get a little more in depth about the uh, formula and models and some of what we've done there. Um, this page will mostly be OBE because we're doing a demo in a minute. Whoa, what happened there? Okay, so jumping back to where we were, these are just a couple screenshots uh, with a quick overlay uh, overview of what we're doing. The formula, as you can see, it's just a little WYSIWYG screenshot of the web page. Click, click, click. Here you go. So if you're reading a forum or some blog that's talking about, hey, this data analysis is great, or hey, if you look at the data this way, you'll see something good, you can come by and you can actually click that in and see, well, how does that break down and how does that show in the back testing? And then uh, to the right, you're going to see a simple, uh, a simple example of what you can do with the model. Um, probably wouldn't invest off this model, but it's just a, an idea that you can see for 10 or 15 lines of code, you can then create your own model 
a uh, very simple API, and it's going to support all the platforms that we support. So this model right here, um, well, not this particular one because I'm using a Prosper specific field, but you could build your model and generate it and run it against Prosper or Lending Club, see it in the back testing tool. It allows you as the investor to focus on what you want to work on. So I want you want to analyze the data, you want to do statistics, you want to bring in your modeling people and do this, but you don't want to deal with everything else. You don't want to have to deal with back testing, you don't want to have to deal with high speed order execution. You don't want to have to deal with cash flow management. You don't want to have to build a whole product. You just want to write a simple model that's going to help you get the best return. So we can allow you to do that and work with you to bring that into our system and get all the rest of that uh, platform that you need to actually execute that model. This is just kind of an example of, of how it comes out on the, on the back end, and we'll get a little more than that in a second. Uh, but you can see they just become fields on the UI, and you can use them just like anything else. We take your model, we, we break it down into buckets, uh, just like the rest of the user interface. And you can see that here's their ROI on those buckets with the average rate of return. There's more fields that got chopped off. But you can see lo estimated loss rates and how many loans match those those criteria for those different buckets to see, well, yeah, this may be a good formula, but they're not listing enough loans that did this, or they're only old loans, and it's not going to get me anywhere. Um, so, and all this is tied into the automated execution that we talked about a minute ago, that once you create this filter on the UI, and you've done your back testing, and you see what you want, it's just a couple clicks to save it, and then another couple more clicks to execute it. And you put it into your execution plan, and it runs. All right, we're going to switch over to the demo now. So we were talking a little bit before about the white labeling. Here we've built a, a lended branded version of NSR. Um, it's very simple to switch out themes. You can build custom content. So if you want to have like an FAQ for your customers, you can come here, you can create that content on the fly. And what you have now is something that's branded specifically to your company. Um, the original vision, and this can be turned off uh, for NSR, was to kind of be like the um, Bloomberg kind of page, and you're just looking for like how's the what are the market conditions. So, um, if you've never been to NickelSteamer.com before, um, you know we we list basically all the vintages uh, right in the beginning. We go into some of the trends. We pull in Federal Reserve data. So if you're interested to see what the spread is between, um, you know, Treasuries and then like this asset class, you can find all that information on the website in the charts section. Uh, we also track interest rates, and you can kind of see if they're bouncing up or down during the day. Um, interest rates don't move that much now, but you know it could get a lot more interesting in the future, specifically with the secondary market. Um, but we also then kind of aggregate the, the, the headline news. So if you're looking for a place just to get like what are the most current headlines, we basically scour the internet for the most relevant information and then produce it on the website here on the right. And then finally at the bottom, we've got our loan grade ability, availability indexes that tell you how many loans are available on both platforms. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to log in really quick. We're logged in now. Um, probably the, the most utilized feature of the website is the back testing. And what this allows you to do is see how different credit elements will impact ROI. If we just do a, a filter here and we see what the results are, we've basically just processed every single piece of data that we have for, for Lending Club and we're giving you the, the all matching loans ROI, which is here, it may be a little difficult to see on the screen. Then we also break it down by some of the key categories. We have um, this magnifying glass here, so if you're interested in going beyond a year, you can actually dial in and then see it by quarter. If you're finding what you're looking for isn't available in the results breakdown, you can go over here and then additionally select any number of things that we support, and there's a, a lot of them. But I'll show you a real quick example. Let's say you're investing in d and and you're looking at inquiries that are zero. Real simple. We're going to go ahead and filter this. We can see the results. And then maybe you're curious about like how can I boost that ROI a little bit. You can go to the show extended results. Oops, sorry. We want to go to show subfiltering. And we can drag this minimum ROI over to 10. And we can kind of see then 
you know, which things can we kind of cut out that weren't really making the grid? And, and if you remove those things from your filter, you'll eventually boost that ROI. So it's a very powerful way to build an investment strategy using filters. And this is just one of the modalities that we support. There's also, also models. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll save that filter. I'll give it a name. I'll just call it test. I'll save it. And let's say this is the filter I wanted to start using for my clients. I would come over to auto investing. I've already set up the accounts. I've got a number of, of test accounts in here. And what we can do is we can go to set up auto investing. We can create a new auto investment. We can select that filter. We can give it a name. We can create that. We've got our auto investment saved. We kind of give you a, a baseline execution plan. You can pick your note denomination side. You enable that auto invest. You select the account you want to use, and you're off and running. And, that, and the system will continually monitor the primary market for new loans coming out and then order those for you. We have, um, under charts, we have quite a bit of data, too, that you can look at. Um, and we also have the economic data that you can overlay. And now I'm going to let Rocco speak a little bit more about the modeling. So we designed the system to be pluggable to add new promoters in. And these modeling and the formula is kind of the first pieces of that that we've done. Uh, so going back to the auto investing, or the back testing, I'm sorry. You can see we have all the normal fields, and then and they, in the model fields, come over here if you have the right permissions and we've set you up, you actually get your model. So we created a couple quick models just to, to show it. These are the demo model um, and the cash flow formula that were on the PowerPoint. I just went ahead and created them and deployed them. Um, and then you can come down here and you can get breakdowns on these just like you can on the, the regular data. And they function just like a regular a regular element uh, that you would have gotten from the export, except they're yours. So I can come down to the bottom and I can see, hey, here's my monthly cash flow breakdown. And I believe this was something we saw on a, a blog post of somebody else. We just wanted to analyze and see how it was. And it, it's an interesting thing. And let me actually show what that is before I analyze the results. Um, so the simple formula, stated monthly income minus monthly debt minus listing monthly payment. That's how much free cash flow you have in the month. You know, how much did I make versus how much is my debt and what's my new payment for this? And you can run that and see, well, what impact is that really going to have my results? And if you look over here, one of the very interesting columns we have is the loss factor. And you can see that there's a really high loss when you have low cash flow, and it just almost naturally progresses all the way down to a much, much lower loss rate. There's a couple things impacting that. The people with higher cash flow probably have a higher credit grade. You know, they're probably getting an A loan or a B loan. But at the same time, um, you can then take that and merge that with other statistics. So if I want to look over here and come back and say, well, I want to see how that monthly breakdown is going to impact you know, just the C loans. Okay. And come down here, select that, and run. And then we can see, well, yeah, the loss flow, even just in the C loan group, my loss factor is still going down, and my ROI is going up significantly. So I can then take this data and say, okay, well, you know, I'm very curious about everyone who's about $5,000 or more. And we can execute that. So I can say, I want everyone who's got $5,000 or more in monthly cash flow and see how that impacts your overall return. It's a pretty, you know, it looks like this is a really good set of C loans that you could execute. We've chopped down our set and, and look at this. And then again, just like Mike showed earlier, it's very simple to take this and start executing it. Um, we can save our filter, the formulas, the models, everything are tied right in and create an auto invest. Here we go. Monthly cash flow greater than 5,000 C, how much we want, what account we're going to execute that against, and away you go. Um, of course. So the other thing we want to talk about is, again, the models now. Same thing as, same thing as the formulas, except you can actually write a complicated algorithm that ties in to do this. Uh, 
we threw a simple one up, and I'm just going to show the breakdown of how that works out. But again, it functions just like, just like everything else. We're going to take your model. We're going to dynamically execute it against the entire data set, chop it down into buckets so you can see how those buckets performed at different ratings, and get the analysis. And you can even do uh, more advanced things. You can zoom in on your model to get more narrow focused on your buckets. Uh, and that works out pretty well. The other thing we wanted to talk about was speed. So when we tie this back and we go into order execution, a lot of people are concerned about how fast are we executing and when is this going. So if you noticed, it took about a second for us to analyze the entire data set, break it down across five or six different you know, elements, and then calculate returns on all of those. We're doing that in a second. Your model is executing and your formulas are executing extremely fast. It's mostly sub-millisecond for our anything that you're going to put together unless it's extremely, extremely complicated. So when we talk about high-speed order execution and wanting to be able to do this real time, we are. All this is real time. Um, as you, and we also have some other components here in the back end that aren't easily accessible, but as you create your models and work with your models, we can hot deploy those for you real time. We can change them out. We can change configuration settings for them. There are a lot of advanced features that you can do there to help this work for you. And again, all this stuff um, will overlay in, into uh, the different white branded stuff. So if you want to run your models or your formulas and you want to do it for your RIA clients or whatever else and look like it's you and have that control, it's yours. And we segregate everything out with permissions uh, so that your model's not open on the, on the whole site to everybody. It's just to you. These are my models and my cash flow. I guess that's, uh, we're out of time. So thank you everyone for attending. We can take one question.